Hi everyone, I'm Mark Allen and uh, here we are in the Antrim Sports Club in uh, Antrim, Northern Ireland and proudly present uh, Robbie McGuigan, Antrim and Northern Ireland's newest professional snooker player. So Robbie, if you want to get us underway, we'll have a wee chat. All right. So how are you feeling going into the first season as a professional? Nerves, uh, exciting, everything? Obviously, winning the Europeans in, what was it, March? I haven't actually had a lot of sort of top level competitive snooker. So I'm not actually maybe too sure where my game's at. I've obviously been practicing a lot, but I don't think you really know until you go out there and start competing, do you? Just uh, that's a professional nick. That's, that's, that's a, old, by the way. That's the word number one, Nick. Yeah. So uh, yeah, look, it's been exciting times. I remember turning pro myself. That's a foul in this, probably. Uh, yeah, turning pro myself was exciting, but I was always really confident going in. So I imagine yeah. off the back of a big win at the Europeans, Yes, you're nervous, you're excited, but you're confident too, because you've just yeah, come off the back of a big well, win. Exactly, I think if I had a turn pro for the, for the Q school ranks or for the Q tour, I don't think I would go in with the same sort of mentality that I have done. I think obviously, you know, being at the Europeans and competing for a title and competing for a tournament give me a different sort of buzz. Yeah. You know, being in like the, like the standing the last man there with the trophy, I think was definitely a better feeling, so hopefully I can carry that onto the tour. But. Do you think the manner of your win with so many deciding frames will give you confidence? No, because it's going to be a long season, there's going to be a lot of close matches. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just, regardless of results, it's just about how I feel in that particular given time. Because, you know yourself, you can have big results, but then if you're out there and you don't feel good in your Q-action, you don't feel as zoned in, things can go wrong anyway. So, I but think even, for me it's even just... Even in those positions, it's just about finding a way to win, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I think it's just for me, it's just focusing on the future and just, yeah. Going out there, whatever I have. How much of being a part of like this club and obviously the previous club was all the same people growing up, seeing Jordan, seeing myself, even like Swale before, seeing all those people around the club. How much has that helped your progression? Do you think? I think it's been massive, really. I think I've spoken, you know, to a lot of young talents who are coming in through the UK, and a lot of them boys have had to travel to get good practice. And yeah go to different countries even some of the time. I think for me to have like people that I'm so close to that are so good at snooker is a big privilege and obviously it doesn't really cost me a lot to come here either. So yeah, I think I'm very fortunate in that regard. Depends if you start beating me and Jordan then it might cost you a bit more. Yeah, so we'll fair enough. Goes. But uh, yeah, have you any, uh, what's your targets? For the season ahead or for the future? Just for the, for, for your first two years on well, tour. Well, to be honest with you, I have a lot of, I've, I've sort of a, a rough idea of how much money you need to make and stuff, but a few of the targets I want to, Qualify for a tournament in China. That's one of my goals. Uh, you know, obviously I've seen the hospitality out there. I think if I can qualify for as many tournaments abroad, I think it'll be as good for me. You know, the Saturday yeah. tournament as well. It is a very different experience when you play snooker abroad. You're, you're sort of you're catered for a lot better than you would do in the UK, and that's not taking anything away from the yeah. UK tournaments. But you've seen yourself the red carpet treatment, all that there. It'd be perfect as a new professional to experience that straight away because yeah. I didn't get the experience of anything, anything really over sort of that neck of the woods for a number of years. You could I hit think the ground the running. snooker has grown a lot since whenever you turned pro. I yeah. think if I had to be perfectly honest, whenever you turned pro, snooker was in a bad state to be honest. I think yeah. it was for the years after that. I think I am grew up in a very privileged time that I've turned pro, I get the 20 grand guarantee. You know, I'm playing like a, there's tiered tournaments, but there's also flat one two eight tournaments to play in. It's just giving me every opportunity to do yeah. well. And I think well, Barry Hearn's not to speak for for all that, to be honest. Well, my first year on tour, there was six events. No. Obviously, the Masters, which was sort of nearly unachievable, unachievable to get into that in that first year, but I lost in the World Qualifying in March and didn't play again until September. So yeah. it's a completely different looking calendar. So I think if I had to have an opinion of it, I would say the standard's probably as good as it's ever been. But in terms of the opportunity, I think it's far, far easier to do well now than probably would have been back in the day. Because you had six tournaments as a first time pro. You know, if you don't get off to a good start after the first couple of events, you were never staying on the tour. Yeah. And you only had one year to do it. So I think there's more opportunity. The players are probably better, I, I'd probably say, but there's more strength and depth. But Inevitably, the only way you're going to learn is being on the tour, isn't it? So. Absolutely. You, know, you can only get experience through experience. Now that's I feel like uh, I've cliche, learned. cliche, but it's true. I feel like I've learned as much as sort of could do the last couple of years in the amateur scene. Yeah. I feel like I've had to stay there any longer. I don't know if how much more would have helped me, so I think I've got on the tour at the right time. It's uh, How much, Robbie, is seeing the likes of Liam Graham, who I know you get on really well with, yeah. getting on tour before you and 
How much does that give you extra motivation to get on? To be honest, you're none at all. None? And I'm, okay. not, I'm not that sort of person, to be honest. But uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean even from, not in any way of a jealousy point of view, not, I just mean in a motivation sense to say, oh, if he can do it, I know I can do it type thing. Yeah, maybe perhaps subconsciously, maybe that wasn't at the back of my mind, but I just always had it in my head, I'll, I'll just turn pro when I'm ready. And when it, whenever that may be, it may be. If I hadn't have turned pro this year, it would have been maybe the next year. I wouldn't have been too bothered now, so that's not really something that played in my mind as much now. I don't do know what. How do you feel if we drew each other at any point? Because I know obviously we've had a very close relationship over the years, so how do you think that would As go? I said, the, in other interviews, I think I would see it as an achievement on my behalf. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, I've grown up practicing with you, but then just be playing you in a tournament, I think it would show progression in my, my career. I think it would be a quite proud moment for me to play you, to be honest. I don't think there would be any sort of nerves really in that end from my end. I think I would just enjoy it. I think you'd be a nervous wreck. Probably. You're absolutely right. I think uh, I think it'll be a good occasion for Northern Ireland snooker because you know it just shows where you can get to if you work hard. Not no idea what this break is by the can way. We talk about the fact that I haven't hit a ball in a long time and I haven't missed yet. So <laughs> thanks thanks for that, Rob. It's uh, just like every other day. This. I just know that like whenever I played Jordan in the UK Championships, because we've known each other for so long and we're so friendly, I don't enjoy that type of match. But I know that you're. Not that you don't like me or Jordan, but you're just not that type of person. You just play, which is a great attitude. No, to I have. think I think more sort of me. I think it's just I would say it I think I'd be very comfortable playing used to. So I think it's actually probably an opportunity for for me to play quite good snooker in a sense, maybe perhaps. But I don't I think, think I'd be more comfortable just because we're so used to playing. Yeah, exactly. I mean if I were to play like a you know, a top pro early doors, there's an element that you know, you're playing somebody you never played before, there's an element of nerves on that side of it. Yeah. Just a slight bit until you get used to playing everybody, but I think obviously playing you and Jordan as much as I have, I don't think it would be any anything like that. And I know, you know I know you've been an avid watcher of snooker for a long time, so yep. how, do you, how do you feel about some of the changes in recent years with like the open f format and the tiered structure? And obviously in the last year or two, some of the tournaments went sort of more towards the tiered again. Do you think that gives you more of an opportunity or would you rather have seen it stay open? I think I like a mixture of both. I think I like the opportunity for youngsters to go in the flat one to it and play the Higginses and Ronnies on TV. I think they need that exposure. I think we all do, to progress in the game. But at the same time, do you want to be drawn Ronnie and Higgins the first round of every tournament? You don't. So yeah. I think the tiered structure is good in that regard. That It allows you to work your way up the rankings. and Hopefully with a tiered structure, it can create a more true reflection of a ranking list because there's players who get one deep run and you know, they're to flan up the rankings and there's people that are getting tough draws first round every time that you know, are, aren't staying on the tour, but maybe it's not a true reflection. So yeah. Another thing as well I like about the tiered structure is that the pros that are coming in have to win their first match to get the ranking points. Yes. So I don't think it's protecting the top players as, as much as what it was in the past. So yeah, I like the idea. See, I knew that was a good question to ask you because you'd give a very measured answer. But a lot of people coming in at the bottom end just think, like either they're strong for the tiered or they're strong for the open. They're not. They're not really as measured as that. I think. I think just. I think, just, I think well. just a bit of both. I think, by her, made a good point over the years that you have to be able to compete with the top boys to be a top player. And I think that experience of playing them, because another way of looking at it is, if it's all just tiered structures, you may not actually play too many top players because well, you have to qualify. My argument against that would be like you, you've seen the likes of Jamie Cope, Neil Robertson, Ding, even Kyron Gilbert. These guys have all dropped off tour yep. under that tiered structure. It's, it's, it's a tough format. And I think you need to be able to sort of earn your, or serve your apprenticeship really by winning matches against people of a similar ranking to start off with yeah, and building confidence. As you said, I think me, perhaps the people I were stuck over probably against that for a number of years, but they've probably seen how tough it is for the young yeah. ones to stay on and they, they understand it. But Voice at the mentality, if you're good enough, you'll do well in the game, probably regardless of the situation. Yeah. So I want to go in the mentality just to and much win the matches. In recent years, you've had a few top ups for events, yep. and uh, you've obviously played in the Northern Ireland Open a number of times for qualifying through here. How much will that sort of give you confidence that you belong there, and you're sort of you're, you're not exactly cold going into the, your professional? Sort yeah, of I spoke to. Time. I've actually looked sort of, you know, whenever I was doing that winning matches, the odd match in the tour, and then I was going down with tournaments and getting beat and not turning professional. I was seeing that as a bad thing. Looking at it now, I think I was actually quite good that yeah. that was happening because I was getting amateur experience plus playing in the pro ranks. I think that the perfect example is Liam Davies. I think he's only 8, 17 or 18. He's probably won about 10 matches in the tour. Yeah. Like for somebody like him, he, he could have turned pro probably two or three years ago, but he could probably go on the tour now and stay on the tour because of that experience. 
I, I agree with all that, and I, I think another good thing is the way the, the tour is currently set up. That coming in as a new pro, you're not you're not phased by seeing the top players at all the tournaments. You see them week yep. in, week out, all the events. Whereas whenever I was coming through, you were lucky to see a top sixteen player for <laughs> a season, unless you were doing really, really well yourself. Whereas now, I think you're seeing more and more upsets because of that. You're just yep. seeing. You, know, you see Ronnie, you see Judd, you see yep. Selby at every event, and you're just used to seeing them around. Whereas seeing, like, say, Henry for me growing up, it was an experience just to see him in a practice. Yeah, I remember like your dad telling me a story about the first time you played, was it, I don't know if it was Henry or Davis, but he says that you just couldn't take your eyes off Henry, Henry. and Henry battered you, and yeah. he says you just were just some admiration of him. I, I played Henry, uh, it was actually my very first tournament as a professional. I, I beat Steve Davis and John Higgins, and was playing Stephen Henry in the quarterfinals. And I spent the whole match just watching him and not even thinking about what I was trying to do myself. And I couldn't win. I actually yeah. couldn't win because he was my hero and I was like, it was probably the first time I'd ever seen him. And I did just share a table with him as an experience. But I remember I played him later on that same year in the UK Championship and I made a conscious decision to say, I'm not going to look at him at all here. I'm just going to sit on the table and play. I remember you tell me every time he walked by, you just like picked the point in the floor and just watched it, yeah, just to just make sure you didn't, you didn't look at him. I didn't want to look at him at all, just put myself off. But yeah, obviously now it's different because you're seeing the top players at every single tournament. That was close, I thought that was him when you hit it. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I picked the point at the pocket there. It was no, you, <laughs> you were thinking about Stephen Henry there when you played that one. <laughs> I think as well the last couple of years what Word Snugger's done the social media side of things, like Henry's been a big influence in that, getting the new footballers and the cheese tips. And yeah. I think they've made it a conscious effort for that too, haven't they? I think, I think there's been massive improvement. Obviously I was a, a big critic of Word Snugger and some of the things that were they were doing for a number, number of years and stuff, especially in the social media regards as well. But everything's improved. I think everything's going in the right direction now. I think for the most part everyone's pulling in the right direction as well, yeah. which is probably a first because Easy, players are easy to criticise and like I'm the first to do it, but still can't get a double. But uh, I think the sign of things to come, everything's improving and it's an exciting time for you to turn pro, so good luck. Thank you, thanks for the frame. Talk about the fact that I made about 70 or 80 there. <laughs> I, know, I lost count, I 